welcome back to the Citizen Channel. That we're all staying safe and well. I'm going to take you back to 1979 today. Yes, the year of, well, my I'll say my first marriage, my only marriage up to now. But uh, obviously, it's no longer in existence at this point in time. But uh, yes, 1979. I'm going to go back to the 13th of October. So I'm probably four or five. I'm still in the honeymoon period while I was married. One to four or five months at that stage. So I'm going to have a look at uh, match day, what would be 12, if you call it the, this day and age, 12 of 42. And it was City versus Nottingham Forest. Yes, yeah, I'm going to look at the arrival of the just-crowned European champions. Eh? We can say that about ourselves now as I'm recording this. And the top of the league team at that point in time to main road. Yes, Nottingham Forest. As Tony Buck's uh, Blues, or was it Tony Buck? Well, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. Struggle for a little bit of form this season. Join me as we look back at the events surrounding the game and the game itself. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications, everything city past like this and present, of course. And if you can give us your support, be very grateful. Leave us your comments, leave us your thoughts, leave us your memories, guys. Were you there as I was for this one? Let us know any memories you may have or mine are shocking. But I find little incidents are sort of kicked into your mind. If someone says something, it sort of makes you think and realise, oh yeah, I remember that. But uh, yes, it's uh, it's a case of old days. And 79 was a long, long time ago as I'm recording this. Or when you're watching this, it doesn't matter. It's uh, a long, long time ago, of course. It's. So please push those buttons. Great to have you on board, guys. Right, let's have a look. The background. Uh, yeah, previously Clough's Forest. Had started the season as reigning European champions, although they'd lost the Division One title to Liverpool the, the season like the last season. Although of course they were able to enter the uh, European uh, Champions League, then the European Cup again, uh, of course as winners. Uh, but once again, they were setting the pace in the first division, uh, with, uh, ahead of just ahead of United, the, that lot down the road with just a quarter of the season gone. Uh, Tony Buck, we mentioned him before, was still officially manager, uh, but was beginning to take a back seat as chief coach Malcolm Allison uh, was sort of uh, more or less in charge of this. We'll, when, we'll have a quick look at uh, Gary James' match report where he comments on this in, in a little while. Uh, after a 15th place finish last season, 11th after 11 games, perhaps not the improvement Chairman Swales would have wanted uh, or would be looking for. It had been worse, though. We'd actually been rock bottom, <laughs> rock bottom of the league in September. So uh, things had improved slightly. But the fact of only 11 goals in 11 games uh, probably uh, sort of told us everything we needed to know. Uh, Mr. Robinson, Mick Robinson was top scorer with just three league goals. Away from football, well, what was going on in the UK as far as entertainment, the entertainment world was concerned, rather than the entertainment of uh, a Malcolm Alice in Manchester City, of course. On TV, the soon-to-be hit comedy sketch show, Not the Nine O'Clock News, would make its debut on the 16th of October this year on BBC Two, starring, of course, Rowan Atkinson, Pamela Stevenson, Mel Smith, Griff Reese jones very, very funny. And the equally um, less less uh, controversial, shall we say, uh, popular sitcom Terry and June would make its debut as well on BBC One a week later, starring Terry Scott and June Whitfield, of course. In music, yes, Message in a Bottle by the Police. My good lady, my ex-wife didn't really like Police much, and I'm not too sure why, was the UK number one Message in a Bottle. But Police had to be happy to share top spot in the album chart, which was quite unusual. You didn't get many albums, of course, sharing top place, but they had to share uh, top spot in the album charts with their Regatta de Blanc, and it sat alongside Eat to the Beats by, do you know, Blondie, of course, uh, Blondie, one of my favourite routes back in the day. At the cinema, of course, it was Dustin Hoffman and Meryl Streep were cramming them into the uh, into the pictures, the cinemas, in Kramer versus Kramer. As that hit top of the box office for that year. Back to football, yes, after that little break up, that was okay. Let me know anything you else you remember. Politically and stuff, I usually put something like that in, but it's nothing exciting happening in the in the UK at that stage. Build up to the game, the lineups for this match. City had some injuries. Uh, the Tommy Booth and Willie Donick, who were key players missing uh, from defence, for instance, for this one. But the rest of the team was Corrigan, Ranson, Reed. Caton, Bennett, Power, McKenzie, Paul Futcher. I had, to, I had Futcher down, but I had to find, make sure it was Paul. Robinson, Viljon, 
and Dana. And the sub was uh, apparently the, the captain at the time, according to Gary James, a bit more of that in a second, was Stepanovic. She was the unused substitute. Forest, well, interesting, great, great team, as you'd expect. They've just won the European Cup, the top of the first division. Uh, Shilton was in goal, great goalkeeper. He'd just signed a new contract, making him Britain's best paid player. Guess how much? £1,200 a week. That wasn't bad, was it? Anderson, Viv Anderson, of course, was the first black player to win international honours with England. Uh, Frank Gray, John McGovern, he was the captain. Larry Lloyd, Kenny Burns, of course, Trevor Francis, who would be a future blue. Gary Mills, Gary Bertles, Tony Woodcock, John Robertson. And their son was an ex-City player who perhaps didn't get the plaudits he deserved, but certainly saw success at Nottingham Forest. Their son was Ian Bowyer. Attendance on the day was our biggest so far that season. It would get better. Uh, 41,683. And yes, over to Gary James in City's match day programme against Forest on March the 30th, 2002. Yeah, he describes uh, some events in and around the game and the game itself. So I'll just read out his, his excerpt on this, on this match. When these sides met in October 1979, Forest were European champions and clearly a very talented, exciting side under Brian Clough. City were also a side used to European competition. During the previous season, they had defeated AC Milan 5-2 on aggregate, standard Liège 4-2. However, a disappointing 4-2 aggregate reverse to Borussia Mönchengladbach in March had ended City's chances of UEFA Cup glory. The Blues were officially managed by Tony Buck. However, Malcolm Allison's return in January 1979 brought major changes to playing personnel. Established stars such as Asa Hartford, Gary Owen, Peter Barnes have been sold, while the new city relied heavily on youth. Tommy Kate and Nicky Reed, who made his debut at the age of 18 against Munch and Gladbach, and Steve McKenzie seem to be the young men on whom Plans City centred. Well, obviously Alisson centred it all on those, didn't he? In addition, the Blues possessed Polish international Kazu Dana and Yugoslavian Dragoslav Stepanovic. Prior to the start of the season, Alisson announced that Stepanovic, who spoke very little English, would be team captain on the pitch, while Joel Corrigan will be club captain off the pitch. It seemed a little confusing, but in retrospect, this appears to have been more of an Alisson media stunt, as it never actually happened quite like that. Indeed, Stepanovic was to miss the match with Boris. Yes, as I said, he was an unused substitute. The game itself was a terrific advert for football and proved Forest were worthy European champions while City were clearly an entertaining, if erratic side. A mixed first half made both sides a little tense at the interval but shortly into the, shortly into the second half, Mike Robinson, or Mick Robinson, whatever you want to call him, Michael, I think he preferred, crossed to Dana, the pole controlled the ball well, turned and then sent the ball crashing past Peter Shilton. It was an important moment but Forest was still very much capable of striking back. Joe Corrigan made a couple of fine saves including an excellent attempt from Gary Bertles who joined the time at United and the unfortunate nickname you missed after a poor run of luck in these pre-United days Bertles could do little wrong and was rightfully a major star Despite the pressure, City held on and achieved a 1-0 victory. They briefly moved up to 8th place, but by the end of the season had plummeted to 17th. Forest, however, managed to retain the European Cup, becoming only the second English side to retain the trophy. Liverpool achieved this feat only two years earlier. So there you go, post-match in the papers, Norman win for the Sunday people wrote, Forrest were made to regret their waywardness just after the restart when Mercurial Dana took a superb cross from Robinson, evaded one lunging tackle and swept the ball home past a surprise Shilton. John Rag from the Daily Star wrote, Robinson checked, double-backed on himself and hit a low pass that John McGovern tried to intercept and missed time that left Dana alone in the penalty box. Larry Lloyd's shadow darting over him but Dana like all men who were at the top of their profession had the calmness and confidence to make the job look simple. The Daily Mirror called Dana's performance masterly. Alison called him the old maestro, although he didn't last too long uh, into the next season for old Alison. The Daily Mail called his contribution simply classy. And the Kipax, well, we just sung his name. A season, as Gary James has intimated that and spoke about there, they would go back to win another European Cup, of course. Uh, something called the Super Cup as well. Uh, yeah, we're familiar with that now, aren't we, at the time? Uh, no dreams of that. But they never really covered it, recovered in the league after this defeat and would only finish a poor fifth as Liverpool claimed yet another title. They also had a trip to Wembley in the League Cup final but were beaten 1-0 by Wolves. But in February, they achieved some payback, stuffing us 4-0 at the City ground. As 
for us, well, as again, as Gary James has mentioned briefly, we never really got going. This is possibly as good as it was going to get a victory over the European champions and current league leaders at the time. As Alisson took full charge, we finished a poor 17th. And of course, if this Forest win was a highlight, then the low light, uh, as we suffered the embarrassment, had to be the defeat to mighty Halifax in the FA Cup. Yes, that was this season. There you go. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this little look back feature back in time to the 13th of October 1979, a first division matching. Yeah, the top of the top of the league were in town and City City gave them a thumping. Well, 1-0 anyway. Uh, and match day 12 out of 42, it ended Manchester City 1, Nottingham Forest 0 with the wonderful Casu Dana scoring the only goal of the game. Let me know any members you've got. Guys, be great to hear from you. Till we meet again, that's one thing don't want. Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Bye for now.